Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us uh, start this lecture with a thought process that is creativity is the alchemy of human life. As I told the creativity is a part and parcel of human life provided we are being educated and real properly and also that depends on the social and political environment where we are living. So, <coughs> And that is the panacea rather I can say of all the problems what we are facing today. So, let us recall that what we learnt in the last lecture, we basically looked at the why are ancient science and technology relevant today, that question we are trying to answer. In the process we looked at what are the problems we are facing in modern time due to the blatant misuse, abuse of modern science and technology. And we looked at also the how we are leading life, how it is connected with that, but now we know the problems, you know causes of the problem, but what are the solution, we need to look at it. So, uh, for that we will have to look at a, a very great person, his name is Kotalya, whose name is also known as Vishnu Gupta, who was uh, instrumental in uh, installing the Chandra Gupta as a king of the Maurya Empire. <coughs> So, he, he has also written a very beautiful book known as Arthasastra, which is the most exhaustive book on the state craftship and then lot of uh, science and technology in that and lot of things are there. So, uh, I would urge upon you people to look at that book, it is a, one of the rarest book and we lost a lot of book due to the invasion by the uh, outside people and they destroyed lot of things, but unfortunately we are having that book and we could see that, that what te science, technology, philosophy and other things we are having at that time, that book. What he says? He says that, Navena Anuang so the yet. What is the meaning of that? That means, re-look at the past heritage with modern outlook. He is not saying that, you just copy the old thing in the, you know, new way, no you should, should not do the old wine in a new bottle. You will have to research, find it out, look at the essence and do whatever required at this moment and this is the very important thing. What we are doing today in the name of modernity, we are just copying the western people and pasting here, copy paste you know. We do not understand that those things what they are doing that may be good for them, but not for good for us. That does not mean we will not learn from them, we should learn from them, but with understanding, which is implication with by integrating with our culture and heritage values that we have inherited from time immemorial. So, therefore, we need to look at it and that is the message what he has given. <coughs> so, what are the solution then? Solutions are uh, whatever come to my mind I will tell, but I just want to hear from you that what are the solution coming to your mind. He has given us pointers or the direction, Kotalya. He has said, look at the heritage, do research on that, find it out what is the essence. That means, what is the meaning? Meaning is that we need to look at our root, yes or no? Yes. Can you anybody? Uh, can any of you tell me any other points? Because the root is very important and once you look at root, then we need to look at uh, this back to our cultural heritage, right, which thrives for thousands of years. Even today, you will find signature of our culture, which was there even Harappan or before that even. Can anybody tell me any? signature you are aware. Even the picture, the way we make, it was there in Harappan time, technology wise. Picture you know like for getting, uh, you know collecting the water, right. 
out of mud, that still it is going on. There are several things like for example, in your auspicious occasion, you put a pitcher full of water. Why? And that tradition is there from Vedic era. Still we are following, but we should know why you are following. right? So, there are several signatures, but those signatures are those what you call markers are going out day by day from us due to the blatant what you call acceptance of modern principles from western people without understanding. So, it is just you know that is why we need to I call it as a cultural invasion for us we do not understand there is an invasion. So, therefore, we need to be careful and do that and try to investigate the ancient scientific heritage of our civilization. As I am emphasizing time and again, this civilization is, is still alive, although it is about to die, but we can make it survive with our own effort by understanding its efficacy. So, therefore, <coughs> we need to investigate, do research, do not be, be emotional that we are part, no, we will have to find out what is the truth. As I told, we are truth searcher. So, therefore, we should do that and redefine the philosophy of science and technology. If you look at the western way of doing the thing that they will have to win over them, Th those science and technology as basically reductionist, reductionist they will find out small, they will look at very myopic eyes, they do not look at the bigger pictures. They will say look if I will take a mountain what will happen, if I destroy this thing. So, for example, I will tell you give you an example. We are having Eastern Ghat, Western Ghat, which is protecting us from the seas onslaught because nature will work, a lot of wind will come in the rainy seasons and summer, right? And that will be taken, thwarted by the west, and that will also water will come over there, and then uh, cloud will come, make the rain, and then we will get water and this thing. But you will destroy what will happen? What will happen to the ecology? It will get spoiled, and we are doing that, right? And therefore, and we should say these are all divine and our scripture says those are all mountains, uh, jungles and then far uh, like other things all the limbs of the mother nature are divine therefore, we should not destroy it. We should, so therefore, we should be a part of it and we look at whole picture holistic approach. So, therefore, the philosophy has to be defined and we should say that we are not living alone, we should live with others. Man is not only the animals should be here in this earth, all are connected, interconnected. So, interconnectivity has to be accepted in toto while designing, developing technologies and also unraveling the science, science. So, that philosophy has to be changed and which is not with the modern <coughs> philosophy of science and technology. Redefine our individual life, we are not here to Plunder. We are not here to only take food and sleep and then die. We are here to help and realize our potential. So, therefore, reshape the collective life of our society, live together, togetherness, joining, Basudeva Kutumbakam, that means all our family. It is not only the human being, but the animal, insect, even birds, even this, any other living, non living, all are part of Brahm what you call our scripture. So, that is as to be looked at it. So, what I was telling therefore, we need to look at our root, root is very important because without root we cannot really grow and we want to grow as a human being. And <coughs> so, therefore, to have a faith in our culture and heritage, it is not a blind faith that I am talking about. It is not that something is written in a Bible or Veda that I will have to follow. No, I will have to question the wisdom, whatever it is there even in our scriptures, even in our, our life. Because our scripture says, Jukti Juktang Bacho Grayam Bala Tapi Sukha Tapi Jukti Heenang Bachang Stejam Buddha Tapi Sukha Tapi. The meaning is that even if a person, a small baby, even a parrot is telling some logical thing, please follow that. If a person of wisdom, a old man or a knowledgeable person is saying something wrong which is illogical, please do not accept. 
that is the ethos what our scriptures has talked about it and we need to follow. But once that does not mean that I do not know, I will say it is no, I need to investigate, I need to find out, we need to look at it, check it and then say and then have a faith in that. So, that is the culture it is we are having to explore the new ways and means to overcome the excessive exploitation of nature armed with power of science and technology. So, that means we need to overcome this problem to live with the nature, use the minimum. The western way will consume more, it is the other way around, consume less, distort less. Suppose for example, I can manage with two or three short pants, I can have, I can take less amount of food, I do not need it, right. I do not need you know like nowadays people are having husband, wife, two person, three cars, we do not need it. So, therefore, this is and when you are do, traveling, you can take people with you so that it will be good. Even if you are going car alone, why you will go alone? You take three, four people so that people will benefit it and the pollution can be reduced. So, this is the way you need to redefine your life and individual life and this thing and also find out how we live with mother nature. So, to learn about the philosophy of life led by our ancestors that may lead us to the sea of happiness and prosperity. Because the balance is a very important key for the human life which was being propagated and professed by our ancestors. So, therefore, we need to look at it and to explore and experience our potentiality. Our scripture says we have infinite potential. If we are having infinite potential, and human being can experience that and we need to do that, then only we can do a better science and technology and so that you will get intuitive power. And intuitive power is very important for doing better science and technology. To express ourselves for serving others selflessly, unless you serve others, unless your heart will uh, bleed for the people around you, then you would not get the ideas of you know or intuitive knowledge you won't get so therefore that is has to be done to to revive our ancient science and technology and its ethos so therefore you need to do that so that is the way we need to uh, go about it and i will just tell you the glimpses of ancient indian science and technology because uh, it is a very vast and also we do not have a lot of you know scriptures at this moment and because most of are being destroyed. And also with the modernity lot of scriptures which were lying maybe during my grandfather times and uh, that were not taken care. I will, I will tell from my experience. My father left my village, grandfather's village. And then he was having lot of scriptures like, I, I, I remember we, we, uh, you know that I had gone home and there in their puja house there is a lot of you know scriptures in the palm leaves. And then my grandfather died and then everything lost. I do not know what the, those scriptures will be containing, but today when I am thinking of looking at those are not there. So, therefore, it is not true with my family alone, it is with the most of the things and we lost it. And so, therefore, we will not get all the things, but I will tell you the very roughly what it is things. We can go back chronological order and if you look at 25,000 BC before, we call it basically early stone age or people call it paleolithic period, early paleolithic period where people are using copper and uh, chopping tools, hand axe kind of things, right. And uh, yeah, and this what people after whatever I am saying it is because uh, whatever the historians they have accepted, but if you look at our uh, uh, other scriptures they do not agree with that, but I am saying whatever people have accepted, right. Because there might be much more than that and I do not want to you know invite controversy, otherwise I could have talked about it. But uh, let us say in that region, Punjab region, peninsular India and extreme south, they were having 
the what you call people who are having uh, you know habitats in during in these areas and 25,000 to 5,000 BC we are having basically middle stone age what we call and middle paleolithic period and predominance of flake tools like you know scrappers like borers points they were using various metal even some stones being used basically I think metal will came metal came later on according to the modern historians and 5000 to 3000 BC we call it late stone age predominance of microliths you know is a very tiny tools which will be people will be using flakes and blades and lunettes lunettes means you know crescent shape of lunar that kind of tool they were using and scrappers you know the we scrap the floor that way and chisels trapezoidal shape triangular shapes you know like drills and boards they started using the metals and these are the same region and 3000 to 1500 BC Harappa culture which was uh, accepted worldwide but if you look at recently uh, as I told in the last lecture IIT Kharagpur people have done research and published in nature journal they are claiming that it is 8000 years back that means basically for 6000 BC right and we are culture and always we feel that it is not 6000 rather 10000 or more than that <laughs> that is the, our way of thinking but we need to do research to prove it it is not that we will say it is we need to do research i hope and wish with this lecture you people will be motivated to carry out research and give some of your time to unravel and prove to the world that we are having a very old civilization and great culture so copper bronze technology we are having very good and lost wax casting process those people will be knowing and I will be talking about it that we use this ideal right making in modern time we use this technique for making the turbine blades compressors and other things very intricate shapes we can fabricate and wheels made decorated and glazed pottery pottery were very good at that time agriculture technology I will be discussing about that what we are doing domestication of animal drainage and public bath we will be discussing sewing I will be showing some picture later on we are using brick since 3000 BC and now it is being you know established that it is not 3000 BC 6000 BC motor constructions you know buildings like we do town planning I will be discussing about later on spinning waving basically this is about textiles right and navigations and dockyards we are having proof to show that we are having you know uh, ship building technologies and dockyard to keep the ships there and it is the Sindh, Punjab, Rajputana, Haryana and Swarashtra regions it is a very larger regions and of course I always feel the southern side part of these are all the northern part and then northern western side kind of thing but I always believe the southern part also will be having a great thing because there is a sea was there so therefore I am having belief but this, that has to be proved so if you look at uh, 1500 to 1000 BC the Vedic uh, era what people already accepted but my belief is that it is much before that that but I do not have a proof if you people will get the proof it will be nice and concept of natural laws see people talk about laws you know physical laws they were having that and unstick idea concerning water I will be quoting something from Upanishad what water is when I will be talking about water uh, harvesting and nakhetra system that is what we use for our astrology you know it was from Vedic era and there is a Vedang Jyotis also calendar system calendar of course we are using the other calendar we are having our own calendars which is very old and very sophisticated you can predict a lot of thing out of calendar unlike your what you call uh, this uh, modern calendar what do you call that Gregorian huh? calendar right that is not that good according to me but uh, of course we are using it so knowledge of diseases and cure like health wise so they are identifying agriculture is a plow fermentation methods you know this also were there 
and numbered names on decimal scale up to 10, 10 power to 12. I cannot think what will be the size of number they were thinking, you know, today it is very difficult to think. So that is again they are talking about Punjab, Kashmir regions, western UP, Gangetic plains. They were not uh, concerned about the southern part, I always believe that will be there. And uh, because for this people have excavated and they got the evidence, right. And their excavation need to be done in the southern side, but where to do that is another question, you know, like where I will go, I cannot excavate all the places. So that is the thing. And this something 1000 to 700 BC, Jadurved, Atharved, you know, Brahmanas and Aranaks, all those things being you know, uh, written, people are talking about. There is a several things, I will not go through it. I will only tell that, that uh, these are the things which people are having like mathematical series, right. And they were talking about cosmic cycles and you know like we are have used some Taylor series, there are several binomial series, we will do lot of things are there in our, you know, from the time and more physiological, anatomical and about the health and doctrine of Panchabhutas, we talk about sometimes we do uh, know, maybe you people may not be our, at least I was our about Panchabhutas, painted grey west and then the people started using iron during this Vedic era, right. And their uses and even soil fertility, how to enhance the fertility of the land uh, for agriculture, they have started doing like your compost, what we use, you know, even. And 600 to 500 BC, this is basically using of iron and steel and then, and then they are claiming their modern uh, historians, they are saying eastern part of, uh, eastern part and central and other parts of India, this already spread this civilization, what they are claiming, but I do not believe. I believe that is the total place the civilization was there. Maybe small pockets where the what you call jungles and other things there, but it is the whole country according to me. But do not go by me, go by the historians because those are provable, okay. So 500 to uh, something around AD uh, till this <coughs> uh, thing, Vedanga Jyotisha and Sulabh Sutra and Vaisasika, if you look at is very great things because they will be talking about structure of the atom. You must not have studied this in atomic theory because we do not teach that thing, we teach the outside country what they are talking. We are having very beautiful system, atomism and time and motion and the sound, whatever the physics will look. Of course, they look at in a very different way. Their main objective is spirituality, but in that they look at. So, and beside this, if you look at, uh, you know, this uh, Pythagoras theorem and the thing, these are there during this uh, Sulava Sutra is much before the Pythagoras and binomial series and then several others like geometry, rational numbers and lot of things, you know, were there, but we need to look at and then again it has spread to the other part, eastern and central part of the India. So, this is from 0 like your uh, this thing to the 500 AD. And there is a several treatises have come up during that time. One is Charaka and Susutta Sanita. You might be aware because today Ayurveda being again coming back, so also yoga. So therefore, some of you might be aware. And Naya Bhasya, Naya is another things. And as I told, Arthasastra of Kautilya by the Vishnu Gupta, and uh, the Jain and Buddha scriptures. There is lot of things and lot of, you know, uh, science and uh, you can see in those scriptures also. So, if you look at there is a lot of things are there, I will not go through all of them, only I will tell you few of them like for example, glass making we well, started doing that and uh, for example, propagation of sounds and the classification of animal and plants they have done in a very systematic way. I am like we need to look at it, we are not being, we are not teaching those things in the school and college, it should be taught and like pi, sign values, extracts. See, if you look at square and cube roots, it was a difficult one, you know. We always use quadratic equation, right, but cube roots and then again first order equations and then other things are being talked about in this here. And uh, there is a engineering wise lot of things like forzings, you know, like uh, what you call lithographies and uh, rapotomy and then, you know, rhinoplasty. Nowadays, it is also being used. So, something 19 decimal points, you know, where they started and the wrought iron made of cast 
exist in two layers, uh, particularly in Indo, Indo Gangetic plains. And if you look at uh, in 600 AD onwards, there is a uh, several things like uh, Pancha Siddhantikas, like uh, Saura, Polisya, Ro Romakar, Brahma, and uh, Pratima. These are the things, they lot of concepts they put together. During that, a concept of Mahajuga, what they calling uh, that is a very big years, they are saying various Jugas like uh, Teta Juga, Dwapar Juga, all those things. And uh, the Briya Sahita Barhamihara is being written at that time and where the chemical processes, plant and animal classifications. And uh, there was another book which is a very good and then it is still there. Of course, lot of as I told lot of scriptures, lot of textbooks were being burnt out because of you might be aware this Nalanda and other things got destroyed. And we are the first people, you know, we are having several universities in ancient times. So, those universities were being destroyed. So, we lost a lot of things and classification synonyms of plants, animals and minerals and metals they have done in Amar Kosh. And uh, these are of course, the encyclopedia today you are seeing, thinking of, but at that time it was there like Sudhya Siddhanta provides the best and most accurate tithis. Like this is Sudhya, Surya Siddhanta is a book you know, which is provided over the tithis. And uh, 700 to 800, this is uh, Brahma Supta Siddhanta. Like if you look at it is having a lot of treatise about uh, mathematics, astronomy and other things where the uh, equation of second order arithmetic progression of for nth terms, you know, like lot of complex mathematics as being the area of cyclic quadri quadrilaterals, volume rules, diagnostic methods are being talked about. If you look at that book was translated into the like Sindh Hind, that book is translated uh, Brahma Supta Siddhanta, which was by the Brahma Gupta. It is being translated to Arabic, you know. And then uh, there is another book uh, Khanda Khadya Ka by, uh, by the again Brahma Gupta is translated to Arkhand, his name is in Arabic. And uh, uh, like uh, Madhava Madhava Nidana, which is also uh, translated into Badan and then Ashtanga Hridaya is an uh, Ayurvedic text by Bhagavat, is also translated into Arabic like Ashtankar. So, there are, these are the things we know it is being translated. There might be several things which might be translated and gone to the western countries, we do not know, right? Or nor we are doing research on that at this moment. So, therefore, there are a lot of things are there. And uh, I would uh, like to stop over here and we will look at this chronological in the next lecture. We can now at least you can having the idea about whatever the little text we are having today, it is showing a lot. Now, if we imagine that all the uh, scriptures we could have kept, even some of the scriptures are people are trying and uh, to uh, get them back. And lot of people are having they do not want to give because of possessiveness. And there was a uh, what you call attempt by I think maybe 20 years back by the government of India, but it was not very successful. But still they are claiming they are having something around 10,000 scriptures they are having. But where tho are those things? And I will be also telling you little later on that where you can get some of the informations. I will be telling in the uh, after few lectures, where you can go and do research, get those information. Thank you very much listening and uh, I will continue in the next lecture.